This is the Halting Winter Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Winterhalter. Today, we continue our series on common small business problems. We've been through the first eight. Today is the final one, number nine. And what is that problem? The problem is scaling. How do we scale? Our business. Before we get into that, let me let me remind you, Halting Winter is here to empower small business owners to break free from the daily grind to achieve exponential revenue growth and increase profits. We're here to get you off the ground and up into the air. We want your business to be like a plane. That plane has six vital parts to it, and we want to make sure those vital parts are operating at peak performance so you can score soar higher, you can soar farther. Then that means increased revenue and increased profits. And that's really what ties into the podcast today. The the final common small business problem is scaling. How do I grow my business? How do I scale and make it make it bigger? In fact, this will tie into the podcast next week. Next Monday, I'm going to do one uh, I'm going to do a podcast on kind of like what makes me something that makes me a little bit different and kind of it, it relates to my story. And you're going to hear uh, probably more about this later on. In fact, this is going to be, I'm working on a book right now. I'm working on, um, on some speeches, on some keynote speeches. So if you're interested in, in if you're a business owner and, and you're like, man, I'm, I'm looking for someone to come and be a, spe- a keynote speaker at my business, be, be a speaker at my conference, do something to motivate our troops. Here, here's my message. My message is this, how do we move from the one man band to the conductor? So if you if you may know my story, I was an orchestral conductor for a decade of my life. I, I grew up as a musician, grew up as a rock, you know, rock musician. I played guitar and drums and piano and yeah, I played in some rock bands and enjoyed enjoyed life. But there's something about a, a one man band. And when you think about a one man band, you think about the guy with like the backpack on, right? He's got the backpack and it's got like the drum kit on him and he plays it like with his feet and his hands. He's got the guitar and the harmonica head. Head gear. He looks like a dentist, right? He looks like he walked out of the dentist with all the headgear on and his harmonica. That's like the one man band. And you know, the one man band has some fascination to him, but at the end of the day, it's kind of a lot of racket. Like if you compare a one man band to a symphonic orchestra, a, a symphony playing Beethoven's, you know, seventh symphony, uh, you, you just like, there's just no comparison, right? The, the symphonic orchestra is so powerful and so dynamic and so like just next level of what they can do. And that's what I want to help. I want to help both small business owners, but also just leaders. How do you lead a team like a conductor? How, most, even in big organizations, leaders end up operating like a one-man band. They, they don't empower their people. They, they don't motivate their people. They're very, uh, they micromanage them. They don't understand that those people have different personalities and, and different um, different skills and ways that they're going to, uh, maybe they're all, you know, in, in the same team, maybe they're all in the same department, but they're individuals and, and they're going to have different functions and way they work best. And it's like an orchestra, a conductor of an orchestra. Remember this, this is why I like the one man band, right? He, you've got to take off the backpack and move to the baton. The backpack and the one man band makes a lot of noise, but the baton is silent. Right, a conductor's baton makes no noise, and yet he or she leads an entire orchestra made up of eighty musicians that, that play in multiple different sections of that orchestra: the brass section, the string section, the woodwind section, and even in those sections, have different types of instruments. Right, in the woodwinds, you have the flutes, you have multiple flutes, multiple oboes, multiple bassoons, a tuba different things going on in in the different sections. And so I think that's where uh, a tuba is not in a woodwind, um, a bass, a uh, contrabassoon, there you go. Uh, we'll throw the, the tuba will actually be in the brass section where he belongs, making the no noise. Be quiet, Mr. Tuba. So uh, here's where, uh, back to the, the point of scaling, our topic today, oh, I don't want to jump too far into the weeds of uh, the conversation Monday, but that's what I want to do. I want to help you the way you scale, the number one way you scale and grow is you take you you move from the backpack to the baton you, you move from being a one-man band you've got to do it all to the conductor who leads it all move from do it all to lead it all now there is a difference this is what I want to talk about today there's a difference between growth and scaling the, the first thing a business has to do is grow 
And, but that is a different thing, at least for me. When I think of scaling, I think about, uh, I think about. Uh, in fact, I would just say this: growth is addition, scaling is multiplication. Growth is I need to add, right? I, we need to add marketing. We need to add sales. We need to get more sales. We need to do a better job, you know, putting some more dollars into marketing and putting some more dollars uh, into employees. I'm hiring. We're adding to the team. Scaling is now we're multiplying what we're doing instead of just having right instead of do just adding another employee. We're going. I'm I'm multiplying this out, and so. Again, it's easier to think maybe like a franchise. That's an easy way to think of multiplication but or, or scaling. But even in a business that's not going to franchise, you can think about scaling once um, you – there's a difference between the growth mindset and a scaling mindset. So we'll kind of dive into a little bit of that today. Growth, again, is about more customers, more profit, really dialing in our systems and structures. A lot of a lot of small businesses. That's what they need help in. They don't really have frameworks. That's why, again, working with Business Made Simple and Don Miller, uh, we believe that uh, a business is like an airplane. An airplane has six primary parts. It has the cockpit. It has the 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 wings. It has the uh, fuel uh, tanks. It's got the it's got the, the the tube or the right the the main section uh, of the airplane. It's got it's got these parts in it. Same thing with a business. You've got your leadership. You've got your products. You've got your marketing and your sales. You've got your cash flow. You, you've got your operations, your team, and, and you've got to make sure all those things are working in tandem first. Uh, they're not just working; they're working in tandem. Because if they're if they're working by themselves, the 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 airplane's going to get pulled apart. Right. If you have 747 um, engines, but you are using, um, you know, jet, you're using um, uh, a race jet fuel, it's not going to work. Like your plane's not going to work. If you've got a cabin, right, that's for a Cessna, but but you've got the body of a of a jumbo carrier, that's not going to work. Right. You got to make sure that things are working in tandem. Things in your plane are matched and, and rowing together. So when we scale, we're, we're again, it's that growth addition. It, we are multiplying now. Now we are taking what we're doing because it's working, and now we're just multiplying that out into bigger and better. So let, let's let's talk about growth, though. Let's, let's take them both of the same thing, growth, scaling. How do you grow? How do you scale? Two key things that I would leave you with today as we think about this common small business problem. Number one, know what you have to get rid of first. If you're a small business owner and you're like, man, we got to grow. We got to figure out how to grow, but I am just overwhelmed. Yes, right there. Why are you overwhelmed? What do you have to get rid of first? Figure out, write that list. And I would encourage you, if you're a small business owner and you go, man, I don't have the investment right now to be able to get this off my plate, that's okay. But write it down. Make a list of the things that frustrate you, that, that you get stuck in the weeds in, that just are soul suckers for you and time suckers, right? They're soul suckers because you hate doing it because A, you're probably not gifted at it. It's frustrating to you. It takes way more time than it should. And and, and so it's, it's soul sucking, but it's also time sucking. It's where you, right, it should... The things that you're good at probably take you like, you know, for 15 minutes, boom, I can knock this out. Whereas that thing, that, ugh, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, like books. A lot of business owners suck at keeping their books. So they just don't do it. And they have a really shoddy system where right, they, they put the receipts in some kind of envelope and hope they'll get around to it. And and so if you do get around to it, it takes you days to, you know, doing your taxes like, oh, I'm going to take my whole week of vacation just to pound through this exercise organize all these all, all these receipts. So you got to figure that out because here's, here's the thing, know what to get rid of first so that as you're able, maybe your first hire is like a virtual assistant that they can take on some of that stuff. Maybe it's not a virtual assistant, maybe it's a bookkeeper. Maybe that is just the spot where you go, this, this is handicapping me. Like, hey, I'm going to get thrown in jail because I'm not doing my taxes right. Number two, it's such a burden to me. It's such a stress to me that I'm up at night. I'm worried that the numbers aren't adding up. I look at the bank account and I'm worried. Like, okay, get a bookkeeper. Like, there are some things that you can do. And you say, oh, I can't afford that. Trust me, you can't afford not to. The business won't grow if you have these handicaps. So we got to figure out first, what do I need to get rid of? 
Are there things a VA can do? Are there things a bookkeeper can do? Is it something an employee can do? What do I need to do? What is frustrating you? What's wasting your time? Uh, th- those are great uh, th- things to be mindful of. And keep a note, right? Keep a uh, on your notes app on your phone. Just keep writing these things down so that as you as you're able then to, to straighten yourself out and, and invest some money into solving those and again you don't have to hire a full-time person first maybe it's a part-time maybe it's a like this is where having a business coach just uh, you know getting on a phone call with me and just going here's where I'm at here is what is overwhelming me here's what's frustrating me here's what I believe is, is holding back our growth all right let's see if we can create a strategy here you, you know a lot of people they're just again it comes back to fear you're afraid of the unknown so you're like well I can't I can't hire an assistant. Why not? Like, do you, do you know, like, do you know your options? Do you know what a a virtual assistant can actually do? Do you know how much a virtual assistant does actually cost? Like you just might not know what's available to you. And so learning, right? This is where I do a ton of study. One of the things I'm doing actually right now is creating just a laundry list is I meet bookkeepers and accountants and, and, right? All kinds of VAs, all kinds of people. Uh, it's one of the things that's why I reach out to a lot of businesses is I'm just interested in growing my network so that as I meet different small businesses, I can recommend their services and go, man, I met this person. Like I met a, a, a tax guy the other day. I'm like, this guy's awesome. Like th- this guy's going to slay. And so I'm like, man, if I have business, I, I definitely want to recommend them because right. Uh, I'm familiar with them. I like their process. I like their I like their um, their business. I like what they're doing, like their mindset. And so I want to be able to encourage, right? That's where, how, how do small businesses, the beauty of a small business is why I love small businesses. You're also, you're giving back to your community more so than just your products and services. You're also giving back because you're going to use other small businesses to help your small business thrive. So we all, right, we're in this cool I don't know what to call it, this, this cool, um, it's like being underwater, right, and finding Nemo. You're in this cool, like, ecosystem of all these other businesses, and you're using each other and helping each other and serving each other so that we can all, right, make our communities better. So I want to encourage you, uh, number one, know what has to get rid of first. Know what you need to get off your plate first. Number two, how to grow, how to scale. Know what to invest in next. First, you got to know what to get rid of because those are the things that are going to make you tap out. It's the most important, right? And these things go hand in hand. But I would just encourage you, sometimes before you invest something into your business, you need to invest into yourself and in your health. And if those things are burning you out and causing you to not sleep, to, to uh, not enjoy your work, trust me, you can invest in marketing all day long. But if you don't enjoy coming to work, you're not going to stay in very long. So let's let's see. This is where a good business coach can help you. What's the best choice going forward? Do you need that new marketing strategy or do you need that VA to really get the ship in order so that you'll have more energy? Like what will actually make the most money that can help? So know what to invest in next, right? How do you boost sales? How do you grow your money? Know, uh, have an idea of what is working and how to how to throw gas on what is working. Before you try something new, figure out what is working and see if you've maximized that yet. A lot of people just love new things instead of going, how do we throw gasoline on, on the things that are burning the brightest right now? Man, that's the one of the best ways to grow, right? And this is where I'll just be honest with you. This has been my biggest problem this last year. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I love, I'm fascinated by new things. I love trying new things. I love, right, experimentation. Entrepreneur, a true entrepreneur, I think, is that's where they're just in love with with risk and trying and adventure. Uh, it's also our greatest strength then is our greatest downfall because we have a hard time going, okay, this, I'm going to do this one thing. And I'm just going to do it, right? This is the Jim Collins good to great hedgehog principle. I'm just going to do that. I found it. And now I'm just going to boom, boom, boom. I'm going to become perfect at this. I'm just going to become awesome at this thing. Uh, that If you're an entrepreneur, true blooded, that's really hard, right? And so, but I want to encourage you, it's probably what's keeping you from growth if you're not doing it. So instead of trying all the opportunities that come your way, why not say no to some, create some boundaries and barriers and try to get after um, the things that are right in front of you. So 
If you are looking to scale and grow, move from the one-man band to the conductor. Move from the backpack to the baton. And two ways, know what to get rid of first. Uh, know what's frustrating you. Know what is sucking your soul and sucking your time. And let's let's create a plan uh, to, to put that off onto someone else who is better at it, uh, who, who has better skills and abilities there. So you can focus on what matters. Number two, know what to invest in next. Figure out what is working in my business and have I dialed down on that uh, completely yet? If I haven't, how can I really sow some seeds? How can I sow some time? How can I sow some effort? How can I pour some gasoline on that fire to make it as big as possible before I start another one. Cool? I hope that helps. Again, if you need some help in this, this is what we're trying to do. In fact, this is the mastermind that we're starting uh, in uh, April. And, and so we've got two masterminds. The one that I think scaling applies to is called Revenue Accelerator. If you're a small business and you're like, I'm in the weeds, this is the problem, man. What you're saying so resonates with me. I, I have stuff I've got to get rid of. It is sucking my soul. It's sucking my time. It's the reason I'm in the weeds instead of up above in the plane, able to move my business forward. Or maybe you say, I, I don't know what to invest in next. I'm not sure what's burning brightest. I don't know because I'm just not aware of what opportunities my business can really take to scale. I need to, I need assessment. I need some help. Man, the, the revenue accelerator mastermind that we're that I'm putting together is going to be awesome. It is going to take 10 people, 10 small business owners through 6 months of focusing on three main things. You're going to focus on your marketing, we're going to focus on your mission, and we're going to focus on sales and we are going to increase revenue by at least 25%. The goal is 25% in the first 6 months during the cohort and as you apply that over the next 6 months, so a year after the start uh, after you start the cohort, my goal for you is a hundred percent increase in your revenue. That is possible. And, and, and small businesses, just because you're small doesn't mean your profits have to be small. Let's get after it. Let's make sure you're maximizing the systems and frameworks that can help you grow and scale your business. So if that's you, uh, hit me up uh, below. You'll see a link. Uh, schedule a time to chat with me and, and let's figure out if that mastermind would be the best fit for you or maybe there's something else. Maybe a workshop, maybe some one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's what I do. I offer masterminds. I offer workshops. To, to solve custom problems with specific solutions. And I do one-on-one -on -one coaching to make sure you have uh, a touch point, two touch points per month to make sure that you're moving forward. That's one of the things too. It's just, it's hard. Sometimes we get in the weeds and we don't have someone in our ear going, this doesn't matter. Stop, stop playing with small fires and let's focus on the things that are actually going to grow the business. Let's stop saying yes to every little distraction and let's start ma making sure we're working. We're doing the work on the priorities that we set. So uh, if I can help in that, would love to look below at the links, take the business assessment, schedule a call and let's chat about the opportunities that I can help you with, with business coaching. Until then, keep scaling, keep growing, keep being empowered to break free from the daily grind and soar in the sky above. You're a small business owner, but that doesn't mean your dreams have to be small as well. Get after it. Until next time.